Welcome into the uh, latest episode of Nick Stars and Lockdown, although I guess we've moved out of level four now into level three. But uh, has that made a difference? Let's find out. Bring in um, Wellington Phoenix number one and All Whites number one, Stefan Marinovic. How are you, mate? Has it made much of a difference? Does level three feel different from level four? Uh, yeah, not, not too much, to be honest. It's, it's a bit bit more busy outside the uh, front window with the cars driving past, but... Um... Yeah, we got our chance to have a, a, a nice takeaway the other day, so didn't have to cook for the, for, <laughs> like the last four weeks. So uh, the missus was really happy. So a little bit of a difference, but uh, no no football, so that sucks. <laughs> How challenging has it been, you know, not just the alert levels, as you say, but, but no football. You're a footballer, have been for much of your adult life. How difficult has it been without that? It's been a, a huge break that we had to take, and it, I've had breaks that have been long in the past, like with the MLS, and uh, I guess the break here in the A-League can be long at times uh, between seasons, but this is the first forced one I've had to take um, while being on the contract, so it's it's been a tough one. Like, definitely missed it, um, just, just being able to be out on the park and uh, kick a ball around. It sounds so benign, but uh, really do do miss it. It's, it's your passion, right? And then you can't follow that and I don't know you've got to juggle the ball to yourself you know four weeks it's a bit boring <laughs> yeah I can imagine what about some um, goalkeeper specific stuff you know have you been able to do anything of that sort no if, if I'm totally honest there's, there's been absolutely nothing I could do tried to uh to, to do something with the missus but you know cause she's the only one in my bubble obviously with me but that's never gonna work let's be honest so um that, that's that's my life, not hers. So there's unfortunately nothing really I can do. Obviously in level four, couldn't travel anywhere where there's a where there's a wall or anything like that. You know, you're not allowed to drive anywhere. So um had to had to <laughs> had to take a ball some balls on my on uh, in a bag, uh, you know, on a half an hour trip to the to the closest park, you know. So it wasn't uh, wasn't optimal the last four weeks. What about the uh, the rest of your time? As you say, I mean, we've all had so much time on our hands to to do stuff. How have you been filling in the time when you haven't been doing something related to football? What have you been up to? <laughs> well, yeah, we've been, we've been definitely been making the uh, the most of our, our time. We've done like a gigantic, like three thousand piece puzzle. I'm sure everyone over the country has done a puzzle of some kind. We did a gigantic puzzle. It's actually sitting on the floor next to me. We need to glue it together. Um, <laughs> We've been we've played uh, like a like a legacy board game that um, it was actually quite funny. We played a board game. I had it I had it like stored away uh, from when I was in Canada, and we hadn't finished it. And it was it was actually a pandemic board game. <laughs> so so we ended up playing a pandemic board game, um, <laughs> which was kind of fun. We finished that, um, and I guess I guess like everyone else in the country, we found our a love for our walks and <laughs> being outside and enjoying the park, right? And that we uh, we're lucky to have like a little bit of a, a park here in Nio where uh, we can go walk next next to the river. So we just sp- spent hours and hours walking. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's that's how we've been really uh, keeping ourselves busy oh, 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 and a lot of study. But that's by the by. What are you um What are you studying towards? Uh, so I'm studying my uh, my flying stuff. So I'm doing my commercial license, so that requires a, a, a lot of book work. And uh, uh, my partner, she's um, she's studying pharmaceutical sciences, so she's uh, she's very busy. Wow! <laughs> so I have to keep myself busy as well, otherwise I'll just get annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you about the flying, so I might as well bring that up now. So I presume you haven't been able to do any of that during during this period. But to take it back, where did your your interest and your your love of aviation come from? How far back does it go? That's a tough one. I mean, my dad was my dad was a purser on uh, in New Zealand back in back in its golden age for oh, I think it was twenty five years or so. Um, so I I did have some connection to the aviation industry, I guess, through that. Uh, however, um, I I was lucky enough to to go up in a in a small aircraft when I was back in New Zealand and just see uh, New Zealand from above. And when I went, ended up going back to Canada and did some research and uh, I realized how, um, you know, I, I saw New Zealand from above and how beautiful it was. And, uh, you know, you can, you can see, you can see it from below and you can walk through the parks and it's beautiful. And 
but then to see to see it from above is just a another dimension altogether and i saw that and i was like well i can do that it's it's it wasn't that ex it's not that expensive in uh in in canada in the us uh and uh, i just fast tracked it and i thought well you know if i don't want to sit behind a desk when i've uh, finished my career might as well do something like that so this is yeah. not just a, a hobby it's it's a it's a career that you may well um step into once the the goalkeeping gloves come off yeah hopefully i mean uh, i uh it started off as a hobby a little bit of a hobby but uh you know i had to see if i liked it i you know uh ended up loving it and i could see myself uh doing something like that after i finished yeah it doesn't doesn't necessarily mean to be flying uh 747s around the around the world but um um tourist operations or something somewhere down the line why not terrific the season ended rather abruptly didn't it well well it had its hiatus let's call it that <laughs> rather abruptly with um with six games to go when you look back and reflect how do you assess um the wellington phoenix season to this point uh the season to this point has been uh it was it started off very very tough we had a uh, a big um, big hurdle to overcome after the first couple of games uh, but once we found our stride after that uh, win against Brisbane at home, uh, we just went from strength to strength. Really, we had some uh, difficult games in the in the meantime there, where we had to uh, find out how to win the ugly way or just just grind out results, uh, which is you know is not a, not a given. You have to you have to learn how to do that, and we we did quite well with that. And we were we were just I think coming into our stride towards the end of the season. Uh, it's just a shame that it just had to had to be put on hold like that takes you out of your rhythm uh, there's there's no two ways about it if you're f four five six who knows how many weeks um until until it restarts you know you're going to be out of that rhythm you're going to have to find it again which is going to be uh, very tough but uh luckily if we're able to keep the group together we've got a good group of lads and they should be able to find the we should be able to find a way personally how what's your barometer for success for, for goalkeeping success how do you measure <clears throat> your performances? Is there somebody you talk to? Is it internal? How do you measure your own success as a goalkeeper? Uh, poor, that's, that's a, that's a, it's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, maybe someone might look at it from the outside and say, Oh, it's how many clean sheets I guess you keep or, um, whatever like that. But for me personally, uh, when I, when I judge myself, uh, in, in the privacy of my own home, it's, uh, it's going over each individual, uh, action where I was involved in the game and you basically put a tick or a cross next to it. And if you have more ticks than crosses and, you know, it usually ends up being a better day than a bad day. So <laughs> one might be a big cross. You don't want one of those, but yeah, you just, you just kind of, you just got to take the, take the game as a whole. You got to take the emotion out of it and just judge it that way. And then if, uh, if you've done something well to, to secure points that made a crucial save at a crucial point in time, those are some big pluses. So um, that would be my own personal barometer. What everyone else uh, makes of it, coaches and uh, uh, yeah, coaches are similar. But you know, what it, what other people outside of the uh, inner circle say is um, it's, it might be different. But that's my personal barometer. I think back to the game against Newcastle, and you you talk about making big saves that that <laughs> earn your team points, and certainly you did that night with a number of saves, including one superhuman effort at the end. Do you do you <laughs> I mean, do you look back at games like that specifically, or, or do you, you know, do you do your ticks and your crosses, and then you just move on? Just move on. You kind of, because because once you get to this point in your, in your career, you've seen so many ups and downs. You know that uh, if if you're ever in a period of down, you know where it's not going too well, you you know that it's it's going to turn around sooner or later. And you know when you're running on a high, you have to do your utmost to stay there, you know, because it can quickly change. So. Uh, you have to keep on moving, uh, moving forward, and moving from one day to the next. You can't uh, get hung up too, too much in the details. I remember talking to you in, in an All Whites camp, and you talked to me about how yes, there's a goalkeepers union, and, and goalkeepers, you know, obviously <laughs> spend some time together. But there's no way you're giving up your place to anybody. You got Ollie Sale and Zach Jones there at the Phoenix. Clearly, they're they're promising young keepers. You still have a, a very passionate drive though to to be the number one and keep those guys you know just cooling their heels for a bit <laughs> uh, well as, as long as as long as i'm at the club and as long as i'm fit um i'll do my utmost to um keep that number one spot um like you said the guys are good guys um uh, we get along reasonably well and 
but at the end of the day, one of us can only play, play and um, I want to play and uh, need to keep, constantly keep on putting my hand up. And uh, I know that those those two behind me will also be doing the exact same thing. They'll be trying to knock me off my perch. So, uh, you know, friendliness and goalkeeper union aside, we we all want to play. You know, he's a... Uh, if uh, if there's if there's blood in the water, you know, snarks, uh, sharks come sniffing. So, um, just gotta just gotta keep on top of my game, uh, week in week out, and that benefits the team, benefits me, uh, benefits them. Uh, so, how the competition benefits everyone at the end yeah. of the day, especially the club. Yeah, you've been away for a while. Are you enjoying being back in New Zealand? Yeah, really been and really been enjoying it. Uh, it, was, it was a tough transition in the beginning coming back home after such a such a long time away, but uh, uh, really, uh, really started to enjoy it. Like a cup first after the first month or two back, and especially playing regularly, that always keeps your spirits up. Uh, so, uh, so far, I've been really enjoying it. I've been trying to make the most of uh, our beautiful country. So, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I obviously didn't get to see a lot of it because I was quite young. Um, and you know, you focus on other things, not, not not the beautiful nature around you. So uh, I've tried to make uh, the most of that, especially in these last four or five weeks, I'm trying to see a lot and experience a lot of it. So it's been good. Yeah, that's the way to make the most of it. All right, one final question about you, your fellow players. Who takes the best penalty? I know oh. Ulysses, Ulysses is the penalty taker. He hasn't missed any, I don't think. But no. does he take the best penalty in the in the current Phoenix squad? I, I have to say yes. I have to say yes, because <laughs> no matter no matter what no matter what I say, I'm I'm going to hurt someone's feelings. So I have to say, until he until he misses, he takes the best pens in the team. <laughs> and so, who would be next though? Who'd be like? Who would you? Not that it's your decision, obviously. I guess it's who feels confident on the day. But who else takes a good spotting? Uh, let's have a think. I think I think uh, I think Hoops has been breathing down his neck a little. <laughs> Uh, I, I remember in training those two, kind of every time every time we stepped up to practice a pen, Gary would be standing right there and he'd be like, "If you miss, I'm taking the next one." <laughs> and Willie would laugh it off and uh, smash one in the corner, and then <laughs> Gary would take one. So I'm, if if if, if uh, someone had their way, it would probably be Gary. <laughs> yeah, well, he's a striker, isn't he? He's a natural born yeah. striker. He's you know he'll take any any goal. Have you ever scored a goal in your career? Some keepers have. Have you? Uh... No, I've I've come close. I've hit the woodwork, but no, I haven't. I haven't from what, from a long clearance? No, no, no. I, I I went up at the end of the end of the game and I headed it onto the crossbar. Oh, <laughs> but but um, but uh, I headed it onto the crossbar, and then it bounced back to someone who volleyed it in the top bins in like the hundred and nineteenth minute. So. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, Take it. Made your, made your yeah. Good stuff. Oh, well, it's good to look, see you looking so well. I know, like everybody, you, you're just keen to get back out there. And uh, have you been okay with coffee and stuff? Are you a big coffee drinker? Have you been able to get... Yeah, big coffee. Yeah? <laughs> big coffee yeah. drinker. Yeah, yeah. No, we've, we've we've had a little espresso machine on the on the stove. It's it's, it's, it's definitely gotten its money's worth. But uh, we, had to, we had to jump out the other day and, and get a proper coffee, which is <laughs> fantastic. Good to hear. As I say, great to see you looking so well, Stefan. Hope to see you and the uh, the other Phoenix players out there real soon. Thanks for uh, taking the time for a chat. Awesome. Thanks for that, uh, Piney. Fingers crossed we'll be out there soon. <laughs>